So you've never used ArcCAD in your life and you've decided it's time to learn. Well, today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly that. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the absolute beginner level steps of ArcCAD 26. If you've just downloaded the software or have never ever used it in your life, today's video is for you. After this video, you should have all the skills you need to go and follow along any of my tutorials and replicate a small house or anything in between. So enough talk, let's turn around to the screen and get started with today's tutorial. So we're gonna start by opening ArcCAD 26 and loading any template available to you. It doesn't matter what template you have available because basically as you work through ArcCAD, you're gonna eventually make it your own. What you're gonna see is basically one main workspace in the middle. Then you're gonna see a series of toolbars around the edges. So we're gonna start with some of the absolute basics. First of all, the toolbar on the left hand side is your main working area. The toolbar up the top is going to allow you to change, edit, and manipulate all of your settings as you see fit. And the toolbar on the right hand side is basically all your story settings, your sheet settings, your pages, and your layout. So if we're to start with the left hand side panel, what you're gonna see is basically everything you need to create, model, and document. You can drag the side panel all the way in and out to adjust it to how you like it. So if we wanna drag it to just icons, we can drag it to quite small, that way you have more of a working space, or you can increase it at the start because you're most likely unfamiliar with what the icons are, so you can see the text. If you wanna continue dragging it out, you can have a two layer system, but personally, you're most likely gonna have it like this to start off with. If you don't like the positioning of any of these toolbars, you can select the little arrow in the top let it go and drag it out. Then you can basically drag, drop, and reposition it anywhere in the actual workspace how you like it. For me, I like to leave it on the left-hand side and I like to leave it extended all the way out. From a basic point of view, there are a couple toolbars that I personally think are missing from the default in ArchiCAD. So what we need to do is come up to Window up the top, scroll down to Toolbars and Palettes is where you're gonna find all the extra little options and bits and pieces. Basically, toolbars is everything up the top, so if you scroll through this list and activate them one by one, a new toolbar will appear. Eventually, you're gonna find more and more of these toolbars that are useful. So for example, this toolbar, most of the primary functions that are actually quite useful are already activated. So like the axe tool is already activated on the main toolbar. So we can close that one off, we don't need it. But back to window, down to palettes, and what I wanna activate is my renovation and my trace reference. So let's turn on trace reference, repeat that same step and turn on renovation. They should appear in the top right hand side and the bottom right hand side of your navigator. If they don't and they just randomly drop in like they have before, simply drag, drop, wait till that highlighted space appears and let go and they'll be dropped in. The trace and reference does exactly that. It references floors and stories and elevations. So all you need to do is right click on a story, go show as trace reference, and it will show you whatever you've drawn on that floor overlaid. You can toggle that on and off by simply pressing this button here, and you can also adjust which levels you wanna see from that. So as an example, if I was to go ahead, double click on my ground floor plan, draw a random shape of walls, escape, double click on my first floor, and then right click ground floor, show as trace reference, you would see those walls created underneath. Now, if you don't like the yellow color for whatever reason, you can select the reference color and change it, and you can also change the activity color. These sliders basically indicate the opacity of the underlay, so if you wish to adjust that, you can as well. For me, I'm happy with a yellow underlay. I don't really mind what the underlay looks like. So double clicking back onto our ground floor plan, let's delete those walls by simply highlighting and deleting. What you'll notice is that I've just deleted those walls, but I'm showing the ground floor as an underlay. So they're still appearing until I click and hold my scroll wheel, move across a little bit, then they'll disappear. It's a weird little feature of ArchiCAD. It is useful sometimes, but it is something to take note of. Nothing's wrong, you just need to move the screen around a little bit. To navigate through a floor plan or elevation, you use the scroll wheel quite a lot. So I highly recommend a mouse with a scroll wheel. The magic mouse might be great for Apple, but it is absolutely garbage for ArchiCAD. So what you can do in the main window is scroll in and out to basically zoom in and out, and then click and hold the scroll wheel to pan across. They are two of your most primary functions in this entire window space, and you'll use them non-stop. 
right click, same as everything else, opens a right click. One left click activates the selection tool and unclicks. By default, you'll also see four elevations set up on your window. Each elevation basically points around as it does in every other program. If we were to select one of these elevations, we can come up to the top and see that our toolbar changes. So tapping escape, that will undo our selection, selecting that elevation marker. Again, things change up the top left. The same happens if we click on wall, simply draw a wall, click on it, the wall changes as well. So let's delete that and slowly start working our way through some of these elements. So one of the main things you wanna do in Arcade is actually start drawing walls, roofs, things like that. It's incredibly simple in Arcade to do anything in 3D. So let's click on one of these walls. Up the top, you'll see everything change. The first most important feature is this layers section. Archicad is designed around a layer system, very similar to Photoshop. So you wanna basically make sure that everything that you draw is in the correct layer. If you don't know what layer it goes into, eventually you'll figure it out because as you move through your pages and your paper spaces, you don't want some things to appear, you do want some things to appear. So for example, on your site plan, you might not wanna show all the internal walls, but you do wanna show them on your ground floor plan. So you'd make sure that all of your internal walls are on non-load bearing structure or an internal wall layer that you can turn off in the site plan. Next up the top, you're gonna to have how you draw your actual wall types. If you click and hold on any of these shapes, it's gonna give you different options. So for example, a single wall, a polygonal wall, and two different types of rectangles. You also have a couple different options if you need, and then you have your reference line. So your reference line is basically at which point of the wall you wanna be drawing in. You can draw from the core outside, core middle, core inside, or all of the outside faces as well. This is a bit more of an advanced user technique, but typically what you wanna be using is either the core outside or the core inside walls. For this, we'll just go core outside. Moving along, we have our structure up the top, which if we click onto it, Archicad automatically creates a series of different wall types. So it's now broken up into folders rather than just an abundance of different wall types like it used to be in the past. So we can click on interior, we can see a number of different interior style walls, click on exterior, a number of exterior style walls. You can go ahead and create your own composites, your own wall types, but again, that is more of an advanced technique which we won't go into today. For this, let's simply go to exterior, let's click on a 100 millimeter block insulated cavity plasterboard wall, and then we can also see our linked stories bottom and top. Now our link stories can be adjusted through our story settings. That way, if we ever adjust our story, it automatically adjusts, or we can completely define our wall height by going not linked and then superseding this number. So if we don't want it to be three meters tall, we only want it to be two seven, we can simply type that in without going into our story settings. It is ideal if you can keep them linked to something, that way you don't have to worry about how walls move and change it is automatically done for you. But once you've basically gone through some of those quick settings and it is something that eventually you just glance at, you know exactly what you need to change and move on, you can then start drawing your first wall. So to draw the first wall, you've selected your wall, you've pinpointed everything you want at the top, you click once and your first wall begins to be drawn. You can basically draw the wall in any direction you want. However, if you hold shift, it is going to draw a dead straight wall in basically any 90 degree formation. So holding shift straight up and down, we can either try and perfectly pinpoint exactly the distance we want, or we can tap the D button for David, which indicates the distance, and then simply type in a number and press enter. So as you saw, we typed in 5,000, it created a five meter long wall, and then I can repeat that same step. D, let's go 10,000 long, hold down the shift button again. You'll see that our guides are activated, so we can simply go all the way across, return to our original starting point where our little hammer icon appears, press the left button once again, and it will automatically create those walls. Now, because Arcad is a 3D BIM modeling software, what we can do is simply right click, show all in 3D. If you're new to ArcCAD, then you might want to check out one of these desk mats. The desk mat is available from the link down below in the description box. And basically it contains all the required shortcuts you need to know to master ArcCAD. Now the desk mat is available in three different colors for PC and Mac. So if you do want to grab yourself one, check out davidtomich.com.au. It will be the first link in the description box down below. We have our first walls created automatically 
but what you'll notice is they're created the wrong way around. So our plasterboard is actually meant to be on the inside and our brick is meant to be on the outside. You can go ahead and easily redraw this entire shape or you can simply tap the P button for Peter and it will flip them automatically for you. Now that we've activated our 3D layer, you see that some of our icons up the top have changed. So we have our view window for our ground floor, our view window for our 3D, and our view window for our south elevation. If you don't wanna see one of those windows because they do take up a little bit of memory, you can simply hit the X button and it will close it. It won't delete anything, it won't change anything, and you can refind it back in your navigator on the right hand side. Unlike other 3D softwares like Rhino and Revit, you can't have multiple windows open, so you can basically jump and work between them. So if you try to drag and drop your tabs, even if I double click on another elevation, try to open up a second one, it's not gonna let you do it. It will allow you to reposition these tabs like you do in a web browser, but that is about the extent of it. If we come back into our 3D window and look at our walls, let's say we don't like any of these walls. So I click on one of the walls and automatically it selects all of them. It does that because when we were in our ground floor plan, clicked on wall, we selected our multi wall selection. If we were to draw it as a single wall, then it wouldn't group them automatically. However, that doesn't mean that's a problem at all. It basically saves you time later down the track. If we press escape, press option or alt and the G button for good, it will ungroup that selection. So now you can simply click on just one wall or by holding the shift button, you can select multiple. To reactivate the grouping, you just press option G again and click and it will automatically group something. If you only want to group two elements, for example, you would select both of them by holding shift and clicking and then pressing the command or control G button to just group those two elements. So now when I click on my walls in an activated group, then it will only select two of them. I can again select all four, control G, command G, and it will regroup them entirely. By having things grouped, it allows you to change all of their settings at once. We can go and individually change every single wall setting, or we can select everything at once, come up to the top where we see our little icon for settings, or press command T to open up those settings. Now, the settings tab in Arcade is something that you will go through every single day and every single minute. It is by far one of the most useful features in Arcad because it lets you do whatever you want completely free. So for example, we're basically replicating that whole top section of what I showed you before. We have our link story settings, we have our wall type in case we want to change it. We have exactly the reference layers, projection from zero, the ground story, and all of our basic structural information about that wall. Down below, we have our floor and section view settings. So it'll basically show us how it will represent this wall in 2D and 3D. If for whatever reason you wanna override the surfaces, you can do that by creating a new wall structure or you can simply activate one of these overrides. So for example, the Studco white rough and change it to a different color. So let's say I want it to be beige instead of white, press okay all of my walls are automatically changed to beige without me having to do too much work. Now, like I mentioned before, these walls are linked to our stories. So if I press Control or Command 7, that will open up my story settings. As you can see, I only have a ground floor plan and then one, two, and nothing below. So if I wanted to, I could simply insert something below, call that footings, change number one to ground ceiling, and then change number two to second floor, introduce another layer above and call that roof. Here I can adjust the heights of everything between our floors. So as an example, 172 for our footings, three meters to our next story. Our ceiling space probably only needs to be 300. Our second floor can be three meters and our roof probably only needs to be about 600 mil. And then I can go ahead and press OK. What you'll see if we click on the view map, you're gonna see that it's automatically changed our floor plan names and introduced new elements. So if we double click, it'll take us to our ground floor, second floor, and so on. If we go back and press Command 7 again, and for whatever reason, our ground floor has now jumped to five meters, because our walls are linked, we can press Enter, and all our walls will automatically jump up. Instead of having to go through and update all of our walls one by one, it has done it perfectly for us. If we come back to our ground floor plan and say we wanna introduce some windows or some doors, we simply hit that door button and we can very quickly, without even worrying about any of the settings, click, drag, drop, and we have our first door. Obviously, this door isn't correct, it isn't modeled correctly, it is just indicative because with a cavity wall, you obviously wanna close off the cavity and I have no idea what the door looks like. 
So if I select that wall, Command T to open up my settings again, you're gonna get the door settings. The door settings, the window settings, the object settings, they're all very much the same and they have the same principal layout. Up the top, you have your four viewpoints. So you can see the door in a floor plan, an elevation, and a 3D and also a rendered view. The most important are basically these three squares up the top because it lets you showcase how you see that model in floor plan, elevation, and 3D. So as a 3D model, you can see it is a timber frame door, glass section in the middle, and it is a swing door. If we don't want that leaf to look like that, simply click on leaf, pick one of the hundreds of styles available to us, and change it. It will automatically change that door for you perfectly. If you wanna add a handle, click on the handle, click the handle, and it will activate something. You can then slowly work your way through all of these settings, changing the door as you see fit, and to your perfect liking. There are a lot of settings in ARCHICAD, so that's why people will go ahead and create their own favorites, create their own templates, create their own libraries, and you do that eventually over time as you're creating things specific for jobs. You don't have to go ahead and just spend days and weeks and weeks just updating libraries and creating elements. If we come across to our model attributes, this is how we change the actual material for the objects. Now, we can simply click on black for the leaf and frame and all of our leaf and frame settings will change. If we select the main drop down menu, we can come back in down to the bottom to our other model attributes and change that to black as well. So now we have a fully black door introduced into our space. And if we wanted to close off this reveal, we can go reveal to face and change that to 90 mil. That simply just closes off that cavity and we can check it out in 3D. That door has been created fully in 3D completely custom and just orange. So personally, I don't like the orange, so Command T. We can either go through all of these 2D settings, change all the orange, or I can simply select the plan view, come down, override my model attributes and change that to black, gray, whatever color I want. Press OK, escape, and our orange is completely gone. So if you come back to our ground floor plan now, zoom out a little bit, you'll see that our door has been created on our north elevation. We basically pressed a couple buttons to draw some walls and some doors. And if I was to double click on my north elevation in my view map, you'd see exactly that, the walls with our door created. Now you notice the story settings on the right and the left. You'll also notice these gray bars. Basically the gray bars, if we come back to floor plan, are the extent of our elevation markers. If we click on an edge and extend that a little bit further, come back into our north elevation, you'll see that gray bar jump across. Now that's just a visual representation. It's not gonna be there when you export. However, if you don't like seeing this gray space, simply right click and untick elevation range and that will all disappear. Again, if you don't like these settings, you can go back into our story settings by pressing Command 7, untick those boxes, press OK, and they will also disappear. The way ARCHICAD presents its elevations is completely up to you and it's very simple to change. So double clicking back on our ground floor plan, let's highlight this north elevation and open up the settings. We can basically adjust our settings by working through this model appearance to however we see fit. So anything uncut, so basically everything you see in an elevation at the moment is gonna be a solid shaded color. It's gonna have no texture, it's gonna have no detail, it's not gonna have much. But if we change this to a textured fill shaded, press okay, jump back into our north elevation, you'll see that we see that brickwork, we see that hatching, we actually see the value and the detail. This might not be required for everything, so we can come back in again, change our settings. Then you'll see we've lost all that texture, we've lost all that clarity, we've just got a very simple boxed image. Now, these settings are completely up to you, how you're documenting, how you're drawing, but the options are there and the options are endless. The rest in ARCAD is very much the same. So if we were to draw a slab, we can come down to our footings, right click our trace reference and simply draw a slab underneath our brickwork. Coming back into 3D, you'll see our slab exists. It's not set in the right place. It's not the right material that we're wanting. Maybe we want to concrete with 10 mil tile. And then we might want to actually increase the height of that as well. So we can select our slab, click on any one of these hotspots. You'll get another little toolbar activate. We can select any of these depending on what we need. So if we click hover and let go, it's gonna show you what each individual item is. So do if I wanna offset all edges, I can select that. But for the purpose of this, I just wanna drag. So I'm gonna click this little object, drag it up a little bit, escape, 
And there we go, now we have our slab. We can jump back into ground floor plan, click on our roof. We can either select a single pane or a full geometry roof and simply just click, drag, click again, draw roof, come back into 3D and we have a very large excessive roof drawn. We can click that roof, change our settings to 20 degrees, change our settings 25 degrees, do whatever we like to create what we're looking for. Just like everything else in ArcCAD, you can select the object, Command T to open up the settings, go through everything, change the materials. Let's say we want it to be gray, press OK. And there we go, we have a gray shingled roof. Now let's say for whatever reason, you've completed everything you need to, you're ready to export this drawing out, but you have no idea how. Well, that's when we move across to our layout book. Our layout book is the last little object on the right hand side. If this palette doesn't appear for whatever reason, window, palettes, and navigator needs to be turned on. By default, ArcCAD will give you a series of pages. So if you double click, you're gonna see automatically set up your ground floor, your stories, and your elevations. I can simply go into them and it will show me what I've created. What I have done is actually cut off quite a bit of that house. So if I select that elevation, select one of the edges, drag up, extend this out to wherever I need it to be, it will automatically update and adjust for me. If I jump back to the ground floor plan and let's say this didn't exist, so let's delete the ground floor plan and I just had a blank page. I could then come back into my navigator, click, drag and drop my ground floor plan into the paper layout space and it would be exactly there. Just like in elevations, if I didn't want to see any extra bits and pieces, I could adjust that external square that basically cuts everything out and shows you only what you want. If you wanted to change the title bar at the bottom, you would simply activate the settings, go through the settings, adjust what you see fit and change that title bar. Let's say we want it to be black instead of blue, press OK, it is all changed for us. The page layouts themselves are all defined in our master layout settings. So if I right click this page, go to layout settings, I'll see this is an A2 landscape master paper space. I can drop that down to A4, press OK, and it will automatically change the page for me. In this master down the bottom, let's double click onto the A4 portrait, zoom in, and we can see all of our custom details. Now, these details are all automatic. You can see by the hashtags before and after the text. So if we come into File, Info, Project Info, it's gonna open up our Project Info pad. Here, we can add information that automatically gets updated into our title block. So for example, Project Name, Project Address. If I simply type in YouTube Tutorial, press OK, you'll see the project name automatically change and be updated. So once again, File, Info, Project Info, we can go through all of these step by step, add all of our details and information, press OK, and all of our pages will automatically be updated. Now you're probably ready to export some pages because you've dragged and dropped everything you need, you've set up your pages, and it's all good to go. So the easiest way, and my personal favorite, is to click the three little lines on the right hand side, go to Show Organizer, and it'll open up another palette. Now this organizer tool is identical to all of these up the top, and if you wanted to adjust any of these views, you can drag and drop and adjust. What I wanna do is come to my layout book and then create a new folder. I wanna create this as a YouTube tutorial, press OK, and then I'm gonna select our layout. Maybe I just only wanna export my ground floor plan and my north elevation. I don't wanna export everything, I only want those two pages for whatever reason. I can then right click, Publishing Properties, Browse to Local File System, and then save that wherever I want on my desktop. Once I've defined a path, I can come out of that. I can either define to merge as one PDF or export as individual pages. So for example, I just click Merge to PDF, and then all you have to do is press the Publish button. It will go ahead and publish everything in this publisher. So I can simply just delete that layout, keep that one there, select it, hit Publish, and we are 100% completed. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned ArchiCAD 26. I hope you feel a lot more comfortable. If you'd like to follow along any other ArchiCAD tutorials, take a look at the playlist to the side of me. If you loved the video, I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button and the subscribe button. But that is all for me, so I'll see you next Monday.